Hey guys, it's gonna be my first video in my three video series about all the different tournament PvP Necromancer builds. We're gonna cover conditions, power, mini master, and hybrid builds for all of Necromancers. Uh, for this video, it's gonna be all conditions. Uh, that's what I do best. I'm gonna start with that. Uh, then it's gonna be followed up by power, then minion master, and hybrid built into one thing. Cause there's not that fa there's not that many minion master builds. There's some decent hybrid ones. Lots of people don't think Minion Master is viable. I have some views on it. I don't think it's quite there yet. There's something there, though. I want to put my opinions, but that's for a little bit later. Uh, so we're going to start off with the base condition spec that kind of started the whole trend at the moment. So let's right, jump right into it. So it is 30, 10, 10, 20. 30 in curses, you get Hemophilia, Master Corruption, and Lingering Curse. This is for max condition duration. Obviously, go 10 to Death, ma death Magic for greater marks. Almost all all necromancer builds power hybrid condition you need to go into greater marks if you're using a staff staff is just really powerful right now and without that it's not as great at all if you want to go 10 into blood magic that's for mark of evasion gives you lots of life force with the next tra uh, next couple traits that are coming up 20 into soul reaping you get speed of shadows as well as soul marks soul marks with the mark of evasion gives you a lot of life force when you are getting chased you could also go uh, change Hemophilia into Weakening Shroud if you want more survivability and less damage. This obviously is if you're getting targeted a lot. Obviously, Necromancers get targeted. But like I said, that's based on your gameplay, your comp, how your team runs it, and if you're getting constant peel. So change it up. A Necromancer is a very personal, pl personal class, especially when it comes to conditions. Utilities, you want to run Consumed Conditions. Epidemic, I always run Epidemic. You can either go with Blood is Power or something else. Totally depends on how your playstyle is. Per because of what the new epidemic changes, it's not as good, but I still use it. Anyway, so you want to go then on to Signal of Undeath. That's still really good. Some builds are not running it anymore. Some Necromancers, I'm one of them. That's in my build. I'll show you guys that a little bit later. Then you also have Corrupt Boon. I still think Corrupt Boon is a very strong skill. Obviously, it doesn't land all the time and it gets obstructive because of unknown ways that the uh, utility actually works. And then you want to go with Plague. Now, obviously you want to do Scepter, Dagger, and Staff. So the pros of this build are it's pretty tanky. It's got a good tanky damage output-y feel to it. It's, it's in the middle. Uh, it's got great life force just to the fact of Signet of Undeath. Uh, you get the Spectral Armor at 50% health and as well as Soul Marks and Mark of Evasion. You get a ton of life force which makes you really tanky. It's got good damage, uh, however, it is slow damage. It's condition damage, which builds up over time because it's long duration. You have good condition damage, obviously, with being a conditioned necromancer, but with all the cleanses and stuff, the condition duration can be a little iffy. Like I said, this is the base build that I believe started all this new trend of these new high-speed necromancer condition builds, and we'll get, all the, get to that later on. This is just to give some background. The cons are it has no burst. You do not have the damage on fear. You do not have Condi burst or anything. It's slow. Uh, you have no stun break. A lot of necromancers run without a stun break. Uh, I used to be one of them. Uh, I really enjoy doing that. It makes you really nervous all the time, but that's that's kind of fun. You know, play with your wits. I I tip my hat to you if you do that. And the main negative to this is it has way less CC than the other necromancer builds with that run 50 that run the 50 percent increased fear master of terror and soul reaping 2010 soul reaping that is an awesome trait it, it, on small points unlike this giant one it lets you get people off the point for a neutralize and a decap after maybe about two fears it turns your fear into usually about a 1.5 to 1.6 second fear which is just enough to fear them off of a ledge it really goes the extra mile, and also when you use Terra, it ticks twice for very strange reasons that are unknown to me. So the first build I'm going to be talking about is my build. We're going to do my build, my newly designed build. I'll go over several builds that I had before, but this is the one that I'll be using right now. So let's jump right into that. Here are some examples of how you can really put out a lot of pressure with this build. In this example, the engineer has already used his elixir esser. You're going to fear him, get your teammates to put their condies on them, and do your rotation. He's going to drop fast. There's a lot of high burst condi damage. Same with thing with guardians. You want to open with those fears, get them to pop their stability or their cooldown so you can corrupt it. Get your teammates to jump on them at that point and drop all your condies onto them. 
Here's an example with a warrior that all basically what happens is all my bleeds. It gets up to about 15 stacks. And it's a really high burst. This is ideal situation. Let's see how this is done. We'll jump right into it with the build itself. All right, to start off, we're going to look at the actual traits for this build. So it's a standard 0, 30, 10, 0, 30. So you do 30 and curses. Uh, so I'm going to go over the traits, what they're used for, and what else you can use in this place if you feel like you need to. Uh, first one I use is Weakening Shroud. Some people don't use it. Some people will use Hemophilia or uh, Reaper's Precision if they're running Rabbids or something. Personally, I really enjoy Weakening Shroud. I use it personally because when you're getting trained by an Ellie, a warrior, or a thief, or something like of those sorts, you're going to put a weakness on them, and you're also going to put bleeds on them. Along with your sigils, which I'm going to get into that a little bit later, it's going to put a lot of damage output along with marks and your scepter uh, ground targeting AoE condition spells. Uh, along with uh, Spectral Walk, you're going to be getting also a lot of life force. So while you're playing defensively, they're going to be taking damage, and you're going to be taking less damage. So it's really easy to turn the tides. If they get down to like maybe like 75% health or even 50% at times, you do a quick corrupt boon, maybe even a death shroud fear, and start your rotation for bleed bomb. And at that point, you can either kill them really quickly, maybe get the gib, or at least push them off of you. Uh, also, if you notice this, and you notice that they're not really doing anything about their health or that they're not paying attention attention to it because they're tunnel visioning you, call for your team to say, hey, look, I'm about to bleed bomb this guy. Get on him, we're going to get a quick down. Even if maybe you're going to go down because of all this, call it out, say he's low, uh, your teammate could jump on him, maybe get a quick gib, maybe he'll rally, or even maybe at best they'll revive you. So it all depends on the situation and how your teammates are responding to what's going on. Anyways, this is a really great trait to, you know, if you're getting trained. Second trait is going to be Terror. Terror is a great trait, it's going to be a big source of damage in this build. Uh, right now with this current build, uh, Fear will do two ticks of Terror. So for about 1.1k damage each, so it leads to about 2.2k damage per fear, which is amazing. It does a lot of damage, especially since you have two fears and one of them's on the 20 second cooldown. It's a lot of CC that ends up with a lot of damage. Highly re recommend this trait. Almost every necromancer uses it right now if they're running the condition uh, condition spec. Last one, I use Master of Corruption. This is a really good trait. I, a lot of people might not want to use it. Some will use different stuff like Lingering Curse or Spectral Attunement, just or, you know, or Reaper's Precision. You know, it just depends how your playstyle is. I use it. I love the cool X, uh, the reduced cooldown, corrupt boot, and epidemic. Those are some of my favorite skills in the game. Finally, Tendent to Death Magic. Uh, if you run staff, you need to take this. Uh, Greater Marks is probably the best trait for this. It's an unblockable mark. If, if a guardian's blocking, doing his block heal, you can fear it. It's it's really great if you use it really intelligently. Best things to do. Also, with your fears, you want to be really intelligent with your fears. If you get a well-timed fear off, you know, I have my own ways of fearing people. I'll fear to get stun breaks out of the way, or I'll fear, fear the heal, or right before they're going to die, you see maybe they have a couple boons up. Fear them, get the extra damage off that's needed to down them, and then they're out of the fight great way to do that uh, anyways greater marks staff is just too powerful at the moment it's I mean almost every necromancer uses it and you need greater marks for it. it's just a must plus the additional toughness and boon duration is always good none in blood magic soul reaping a lot of the builds here I personally run spectral mastery because the spectral rock you can use different things I used to run uh, speed of shadows great for kiting people in death shroud stopped using it because I wasn't getting as much death shroud because this build doesn't use soul marks and I'll go over that in just a second. But if you're using soul marks for any other build, I you know I recommend this. It's really good for kiting people around and making really their life a living hell. You can also use Path of Midnight, which is really good. It's I mean more fears, more the merrier, right? Uh, but for this build, I would say stick stick to uh, Spectral Mastery. Great, it reduces the cooldown to 48 seconds, and you have 33 seconds of swiftness. So basically what this is going to be doing is going to be allowing you to have a 15 second downtime on swiftness. This was really good. Plus a uh, reduced cooldown on a stun break. 48 seconds instead of 60 seconds. Always good when you're a necromancer because you're going to get targeted a lot. The next one is Master of Terror. This is probably a must for this build. The extra fear duration will almost guarantee that you'll get several ticks off on, the, uh, on your uh, fear. Also, it's really good CC. It's going to almost guarantee people that they're going to get off of the point. And on Clock Tower, it's actually going to knock them off of it. So you're almost always going to get a neutralize if you play it smart. 
Uh, the last one is Foot in the Grave. I use this. I love this trait. Some Necros choose not to use it. They'll use Soul Marks instead here. Personally, I love it in a team fight. You don't get thrown around as much. And if used to its maximum efficiency, it's a 30% uptime. For stability, that's really great. 30% uptime. But, you know, that's if you're going a Death Shroud every time it's up and leaving as soon as it's down, you know. Obviously, usually people aren't going to be doing that too often. I use Death Shroud either really offensively or really defensively, never just to get stability, unless I'm Shroud Stomping. But really great trait. A lot of people, like I said, will take Soul Marks instead. Also good option if you want more Life Force. You know, it's just a matter of how you play the game. Necromancer is an incredibly personal... It's a incredibly personal class, and I really recommend tweaking certain things and builds that you see or hear about just to, like, make it more of your own and uh, accommodate the way that you play. Because if you feel more comfortable in the way that you play your Necromancer, you're going to be better. And that's just plain simple. All right, so now I think we're going to talk about my uh, runes and sigils, amulets, etc., etc. I run Six Nightmare. Uh, this is really great. It gives you good condition duration, which also affects your fear. The main reason I take Condition Duration or Fear Duration is just for fear. I don't really mind too much about how long my bleed's going to last, poison, etc, etc. Just due to the fact that so many things can cleanse off conditions. Uh, and you don't really have a burning, which is really the main thing for Condition Duration. Uh, the extra Condition Duration is just really nice for an extra uh, for fear. The f 6 point trait, I know it seems iffy. I was really iffy when I first started doing it. 5% chance to cause fear for 1 second when hit and a 90 second cooldown, yeah that's iffy, but it does proc often, I will say that, and uh, it has saved my uh, life a few times, and also some teammates' lives, because AoE damage does affect it. So I highly recommend using this, uh, if you have other runes that work better with you, better to you, use them, use what is comfortable for you. Let's move on to the weapons. Uh, so this is where a lot of the build is, and this is going to link back into that weakening shroud trait. I run Geomancy on my scepter, Corruption on my dagger, and Geomancy get on my staff. What this basically is going to allow you to do is um, every time you're getting trained, if you switch weapons, it's going to put another three bleed stacks on them. Plus, you know, Death Shroud, um, Weakening Shroud, your other AoE things that you just drop at your feet. It's going to put a lot of pressure on people that train you, which is going to make you uh, less of a, a valuable target. We'll put it like that. Which is always good, because if you're led to free cats, you can be really dangerous. And, you know, most of the time you're not. Depends the comp you're running. But this is just going to help it you know, a little bit more, and it's going to give you some more control over the fight and who's actually attacking you. Not to mention, if you go down, they're going to be already damaged a lot for your team just to maybe finish them off, drop them, and maybe get a revive on you, or you'll rally. So it's a win-win for this. Um, other sigils may work. Personally, I find Geomancy is the best. Sometimes you lose a little bit if you're just away and you switch, you know, switch weapons just to fight them at, at a distance and you lose that Geomancy. That's okay. Anyways, now the amulet. Uh, I use Carry On with Carry On. It works really great. Some people argue that Rabbit is better. Uh, personally, for survivability, uh, you want to go Carry On because not only does it increase your Death Shroud, but in terms of Vitality and Toughness, usually Vitality gives you something like an extra 2% uh, life chance. You know, which is you know always best. Plus, now with the meta, you know, changing to more towards more condition, toughness doesn't affect conditions, guys. So. Vitality is going to be the way to go. Not to mention Necromancers just have a naturally tendency to go to more HP because they already have a large HP pool as it is. But the main source of, you know, the the need for this carry-on is just because you get more life force, which, you know, is just a, de is a Necromancer's uh, bread and butter. So let's move on to actually the rotation. So I'll give you guys actually what I do with my rotation. So uh, I actually start off always in staff. I highly recommend always starting off in staff. I'll drop uh, staff two, staff three. Now, if you're fighting a team that doesn't have many uh, conditions, uh, go ahead and drop your staff three. I usually save it for a condi swap if I need to. Uh, and then I'm going to follow up with usually a fear mark. I like to pop my fears early, make them, uh, force them to pop their stun breaks and stuff, or even possibly stability, which is just always great if they do that off the bat. Uh, when you're bursting them, and usually by then you might have a, another mark of blood up. At that point, you're going to want to go Death Shroud, you're going to want to fear them, and then you're going to do Dark Path. As soon as you're at your target, hit them, switch weapons, your Geomancy runes are going to proc right here, which is going to be an extra three bleed stacks. Drop your Death Shroud, uh, your Scepter 2 and your Scepter 5, 
and then your scepter a three, followed probably by, you know, Death of Swarm if you have some Condies on you. And that usually stacks maybe around 10 to 15 bleeds, depending how lucky you are with what you hit or how accurate you are. Um, a little tip that I like to do before the entire rotation, uh, this is what I really enjoy doing. It's really great. It's a little bit more defensive, takes a little bit more practice to get used to, but right before that, before the entire rotation, pop Death Shroud. Uh, sorry, not Death Shroud, uh, Spectral Walk. Pour it in there, be in the middle of the team fight, team fight, and as soon as you drop everything, pour it out. After that, they've all kind of like swarmed on you because, you know, you're a Necromancer in the middle of a team fight. That's a really good target. But you've dropped all your AoE uh, bleeds and conditions on them, and you're out of the fight, and that's a great target to Epidemic. Epidemic your target, and at that point, you've just like transferred all your bleeds onto an entire team, which could either win the entire fight or really put it in your favor. And if you win a fight, um, in a, like a big fight at the start of the game, that can usually sway the entire match in certain maps. Example is Temple of the Silent Storm and Spirit Watch. If you win that uh, first mid fight, you're probably most likely going to win the entire uh, match. It's very hard to come back from those maps. Uh, so let's now talk about the pros and cons of this build. We'll start off with the, the cons. The cons is you're kind of squishy. You're easily trainable. If you are out of positioning, you can be easily killed. This happened to me several times. Everybody gets out of positioning at times where you'll just go a little extra, you want that kill, and then all of a sudden you get given by a thief. Uh, one of the major cons of this build is these skills are not guaranteed anymore. Ever since the epidemic change, uh, they can be dodge rolled, it can be blocked, etc, etc. So your epidemic has become much, much harder to of, to get off, technically. Uh, my opinion on this is uh, when you get somebody down, especially if you're running with an NG, or if you are running with an NG, uh, Condi the body up. They can't dodge, they can't do anything, they can't remove Condis. Uh, and Epidemic the body. Also, another good uh, trait to do is uh, Ranger's Pets. If you're playing on a forest, the for forest map, just uh, Svanir or uh, Svani or Chieftain, you can epi them for some good AoE damage on people. I've done that to Keltrop Thief once and kill them instantly. It's a great trick. Corrupt Boon, the most famous of all tr uh, utilities that doesn't really work as intended. It behaves kind of like a projectile, but goes through Sanctuary, but it's not a projectile in an instant. It's very confusing. I don't quite understand it, but uh, it does have a time where most of the time it usually works for me because I, you know, I kind of set it up right. It can be blocked, dodge etc., etc. But uh, sometimes it doesn't work, so that's a bit of a downfall, especially since it poisons you for six and a half seconds, which is just horrible. The only utility that you can really guarantee on is Spectral Walk. That works all the time and really well. Um, now for the pros. Now there's more pros to this build than cons, I find. Uh, one of the pros, it's got some really high condition damage. It's got strong burst damage. It's all condition burst. You do have some sustained damage, but it's not as strong, but uh, that's okay. Usually you want that burst and then you can kind of do a slower pace, slow up condition build, kind of wear them down, and then you go in for the burst, which is always good. You have awesome CC. This build is really good with CC, and that is just all your fears. All your fears that you have that do damage. That's just, what else can you ask for? Uh, this is probably one of the most highest uh, mobility for necromancers, they have it's really quick. So, and that's just due to uh, spectral walk. You get 33 seconds of swiftness, and with uh, with traded, you it's a 48 second cooldown, which means you have a 15 second downtime of no swiftness on your own. That's not to account for like other uh, buffs that you get from allies, such as guardians, elementalists, a little bit of everything. Uh, and another thing is it's got decent life force. It's not the best life force because you're not running soul marks, but the, if you use your spectral walk uh, intelligently, you'll be able to definitely get off, uh, get some good uh, life force going and be able to stay alive a lot longer. Uh, it does remove the uh, spectral armor if you go into Death Shroud. So just be a little bit wary about that. If you're getting trained really hard, maybe take the extra damage a little bit just to go Death Shroud until your team can get there. I've done that a lot. Uh, also, Plague removes it, so just be careful of that. Maybe just wait a couple extra seconds. Uh, those are the pros and cons for this build, so let's move on to the standard Fear Dot. So this is the standard Fear Dot build. Basically, it's just you can tank a lot more damage with this while still putting a good bleed stack up. It also gives you max fears. So we'll get into that a little bit later, but here's some examples of how you can really pressure someone. In this, in this team fight, you can see how you could take a lot of damage get a quick disengage, and turn the fight around with a, like a corrupt boon followed by an epidemic. Let's see how this works with the actual traits now. So these are the traits for the basic fear dot build. 
So let's open it up here. So it's a 0, 20, 20, 0, 30 build. So let's go up into curses and describe, you know, which trait is which and maybe which ones you can change around, swap out pers uh, for personal, you know, pleasure and stuff like this. Uh, I'll show you what I would run personally and then I would hope you guys would change it up and make it your own because that's always the best way to play a game. Anyway, so let's jump into this. So uh, right here is Terror. That's the first trait. I would highly recommend not removing this because that's basically like the like the cornerstone of this entire build. You know, it's that fear doing damage and you have a lot of it. You have a lot of fear with this build. I'll go over that in just a second. So highly recommend keeping that one. Then you, will, I would personally run Master of Corruption. Just I really like the reduced cooldown, corrupt boon, and epidemic. Just helps my style of gameplay. If you don't like using it and you don't think it's worth it, I would highly recommend using Weakening Shroud, or maybe like Reaper's Precision or Hemophilia. Anything around those lines, you know, whichever one you guys prefer. It's always up to the player in the long run. Personally, I just like that. So I try to keep it as close to my build as I could, just because that's the way I play. Uh, it's not too different from my build, just a couple little different uh, little differences. And it's mainly in this next tree, Death Magic, right here. So you need to run uh, Greater Marks. This is a must if you're running Staff. It always will be. It's just too powerful. It's just unnegotiable if you're running Staff, which almost every Necro is. Then this is, like, you know, I wouldn't remove this one either because this is the reason why you go into Death Magic, and it's Reaper's Protection. So uh, every time you're stunned, you're going to do an AoE Fear on the entire of all, all the people around you are going to get feared away and it's going to do damage so it's a really strong uh trait i personally don't like it and this is why i feel like you lose control over your character at this point i'll give you a little scenario imagine you're in a team fight with people you have this trait the other team knows you have this trait because you fought them before and they have like a guardian of some sort so what they can do is they can pop their 30 second aoe stability and then stun you and what's gonna happen is that you're gonna lose a 90 second cooldown and then they're gonna play it defensively wait for their 30 seconds to come up maybe for more uh, stability and then just stomp you and you're not gonna have anything to get out of it because you have no stun break in this build and this is where it really kinda is iffy for me I don't like the idea of not being able to control my fears or controlling a 90 second cooldown it's just especially if it's the one that I have to trade for and I go into a certain tree and give up other stuff for it. It's not my ideal situation. It's giving the other team some control over how you're going to play the game, which is, as a necromancer, should never happen. And if it does, you know, they're doing a really good job. So uh, then you go into blood magic, which is zero, and then soul reaping. So this, you have some like leeway with certain things. Uh, I would personally would run speed of shadows. Uh, a lot of people would run path of midnight. I highly recommend Speed of Shadows. You have no mobility in this build. You're so slow. Like this is the slowest a necromancer can get. You have no swiftness, no movement uh, effects that can make you go any further. This is it, and this will allow you to move 15% faster in Death Shroud. So you know that 15% can make or break a game at times if you're trying to get to the point just a second sooner, just so they don't get the cap on it or they don't get the neutralize. It can really be be a big hand. Not to mention you can uh, kite people really nicely with chills and stuff and then you are moving 15% faster. Highly recommended but you know your choice if you want that more fear some more CC go with uh, I would go with this other trait right here Path of Midnight you know. Now you want to get Master of Terror. Now this is you know another big part of the build because you're fearing everybody so you want them to last longer for max, uh, for max CC and max damage because the longer your fears are the more they're gonna tick. And the more they tick, the more damage you do. So highly recommend that. I wouldn't really change it. Now here one, here's the one that you can change a little bit. So uh, it's foot in the grave. I personally run foot in the grave. Love the stability. However, you know, if you want to have a little bit more life force, because this really doesn't have that great a life force generation, except for maybe Signet of Undeath. Uh, people will run Soul Marks, which is a really good trait but you don't have stability and you don't have a stun break so you're gonna get tossed around a lot with this build it really requires you to kind of like predict what the other team is gonna do and be a couple seconds ahead of them pop your death shot quickly if you think you're gonna get stunned have that stability up and you'll be good to go so let's move on to the sigils and the runes so the runes is uh, probably a must is six nightmare and the reason is the fear shocker uh, the fear you really want to have because once again it's going to be extended duration and it's going to do damage. This is all about fearing people. Max CC, max co crowd control. You want that really badly with this build. 
Now, uh, sigils can vary. So, you know, I would run uh, Geomancy on Scepter, Geomancy on my Staff, and then Corruption on my Dagger. I keep it, like, almost, uh, not almost, exactly the same as my build. Also, I run Carry-Ons for this build as well. You can mix it up with Rabid, but I highly recommend Carry-Ons, and I go over that before. Now, what else you can do is I've known uh, certain Necromancers to use uh, Superior Earth for the extra bleed away, because you're, you're playing this this uh, really defensively, and you don't want to play too aggressively because you don't have a stun breaker, and that's more for a support role and just doing damage from a distance. Now, uh, minor uh, minor corruption I always recommend. So, uh, what I would recommend if you don't want to run both Geomancy, I would probably do uh, Superior Earth and then either Agony or Geomancy on the staff, just for the fact when you get targeted, you're going to need to have some way of being able to like push them off of you and that could either be through damage or through fears or whatever it needs to be. So let's go over the basic rotation for this build. So like I said, you want to play this at a distance. So drop your marks, you know, in whichever order you please. I usually do a 2, 3, 5 and then maybe a 4 or a 2, 3, 4, 5. It depends on what I'm fighting and depends if I want to save my fear and my Condi transfer for later. Then I would, I would usually just go Death Shroud, Fear, I wouldn't Dark Path in there. And then I'm going to switch into my uh, Scepter Dagger and just start damaging from a distance. Maybe do a couple Corrupt Wounds, an Epidemic, you know, do some damage. And obviously if your teammate goes down, you want to get a Signet on them. For this build, I highly recommend either predicting when they're going to go down and then to precast and have good communication with your team. Let them know, say, hey, don't move right here, go down, I'll get you as soon as you go down. Try and time it well. It's going to take a little bit of practice getting it done. Also, a little tip and trick for this. Uh, in Temple of the Silent Storm, if you go underwater, you can cast the Signet on the uh, bottom of the bridge, and it's going to revive them. And when you're underwater, it's only a one-second cast instead of a two-second cast. Same goes with ep uh, Epidemic. Instead of a one-second cast, it's a half a second. So little, it works. You can kind of play around with it in the underwater. I don't do it too much. I find it kind of iffy. But uh, anyways, back to rotation. So you just kind of want to play defensively, stay in the background, and then when you need to, maybe dark path in there for a couple bursts, damage, you know, get an extra couple condies out there. You know, but you want to be careful because if you get caught in a bad position, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get wrecked because you have no stun break. It, the stun break on this build is basically relying on the idea that you can death shroud and if before the enemy gets to you, and that's assuming that you take foot in the grave. Which you know, I like once again. I highly recommend great skill, uh, great trait that can really benefit you if you play play it right. Now for other stuff, let's uh, for other builds and stuff. You know, it's almost the same thing. You kind of have you know no stun break. Not the biggest fan. You can run this with a uh, spectral walk. Good, it's a good build also, but you lack in some team support there. So there's different things you can do. So let's look at the pros and cons of this build that I've made up right now. So the first pro is going to be you're pretty tanky. You can survive a while. You have, you know, you fear people when they stun you. You have good life force generation if you take certain uh, traits. Uh, you have good HP and, you know, you just take some a little bit more damage. You got some more toughness in there. Uh, you have good Condi damage. Your Condi damage doesn't suffer at all from this build. Besides, you know, you lose 100 just from taking 100 out of curses. Uh, you have the most CC any Necromancer could get at the moment, which all those fears and they all do damage. So this is gonna you know increase your damage a lot. And then finally, you have some good support since you're gonna be out in the back, just drop you know dropping your bleeds on people, doing your own thing, and then doing some reses plus plague and stuff. You give some really good team support and it can be really vital in a team fight. This is why you know people might target you a little bit more often. We're gonna get that. To, we're gonna get to that right now in the con section. The con section is you basically have no mobility. You have no swiftness in this build, nothing at all to get past it. Uh, second con is it's not the best life force generator if you uh, don't run soul marks, if you run the foot in the grave. So that can be a bit of a downside. Uh, it's It starts becoming a snowball effect. If you start winning, you're going to get, and getting kills off, you're going to get a lot of life force, and that's always really good. But if you start losing the team fights and your team's not doing fantastically, you're not going to get life force, and you're just going to be kind of stuck there. So it's it's going to matter on how you play your team fights and stuff. So it's it's very situational. And then finally, one of the biggest ones is you have no stun break. Now, um, I used to run no stun break for a really long time. It's a lot of fun, and I highly recommend it if you just want to live on the edge. But if you're getting targeted a lot, 
and you don't like being targeted, just run a stun break. Get out of there if you can. Flesh Room's a great stun break. Uh, really just gets you out of the fight. So uh, so this is basically the Fear Dot build. You know, try it out. Make it your own. Uh, find out how well it works for you. Personally, it doesn't work that well for me. I stick to my own build. A little bit high, faster paced. What we're going to look at next is a really sustainable, much tankier build. So, uh, And then we're going to also have Zombify in here for that. So take a look at that one. It's a great build. A lot of fun to play. Uh, a little less damage. So let's give it. Let's start with the traits then. Once again, uh, so it's the thirty in curses, thirty in death magic, and ten in blood magic. So Correct. Why don't you uh, explain a little bit about the curses, the curses tree? Okay, I mean it's a Condi build, so you're going still heavy curses. Um, ling like just master corruption, terror, hemophilia, just you know very straightforward. Yeah. Uh, terror is mainly there to try and help spike damage since you're going to be more on the sustain side than the pure uh, damage side. Mm -hmm. You can swap it out with Lingering Curse if you still just want more uh, condition duration with the Scepter. So, I mean, it's very straightforward. Um, the idea behind the next tra uh, tree... Uh, the death 30, Magic tree? 30 Death Magic. Is, since you're a Necro, you already have a high base life pool um, and conditions are go through toughness and you already have your necro you can cleanse so, uh, very well so run 30 into death uh, magic I mean yeah death magic for greater marks you just need that it should be honestly baked into the staff you know what for sure <laughs> go get on them about that um, staff mastery staff mastery provides two things you're gonna be dropping a lot more well um, marks of blood for your team mid-fight you can just start throwing regen on everyone and it gives you a very fast send back with future mark so your, your send back should be up you know more consistently compared to the other necro usually and then the final reapers protection it just keeps you from getting hard swapped onto it's you know some people like it some people hate it I, I prefer it because it gives you that minor little window to react if you get hard swapped like if you were just out of position so it's just really nice. Yeah, I was talking about that in my other part of the video about the, which is a typical fear dot build. And I personally, I'm one of the necromancers that doesn't like it because I feel they get it gives the enemy team a possibility to control a cooldown. That's true. Um, but usually, mo most of the time, I haven't come across a, a team that truly keeps an eye on that. Now there are some good players who know, you know, it might be up, so they'll just pop stability before switching to you. Like, uh, H-Man's a good example when he was playing Warrior. Like, he oh, would yeah. pop stability when he was dueling me before he actually went in on the kill because he knew Reaper's protection was up. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it's give and take. You know, it's a very long cooldown. But I, I like it just, you know, most of the time it works. And then finally, the nice thing about the build is going to be 10 in a Blood Magic, which is Mark of Evasion. I, I love this talent. I wish I could put it in almost every build. Yeah, for sure. I wish I could put it in my build right now. A little 10 extra traits would be nice, but it would just make my bleed bomb a little bit more effective. It provides pressure uh, just when you're in a team fight. It just provides pressure that's with no cooldown, no, you know, can't get interrupted. Yeah. It provides regen, so more sustain, and it's, it's just all around nice. And um, with this, you want to run uh, Shaman's Amulet. Shaman's Amulet just makes you very beefy, and healing just scales amazingly with this build. Yeah, I can see that. You have, what is it, uh, 669 healing power? That's correct. So, which makes your, yeah, 1,282 regen from just Mark of Blood. That's ridiculous. I mean, you can run several different rune setups and maybe spike it up a little bit more if you truly want to go healing side. But yeah, basic, you know, yeah, 669 if you run uh, a Shaman's Jewel instead of a Rabbit Jewel like I do, even more. Yep. And then you uh, you were talking about that you used to run Undead Ruins, but now with the current meta kind of shifting towards more of the tear, it's, you were thinking about Nightmare, correct? Yeah, with um, just the condition duration, with everything shifting, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it now with also saying dropping Weakening Blood, getting weakness on the target for a longer duration is nicer, mm -hmm. you know. It just it scales better, but yeah, with the current terror uh, shift, 
it, wor it should work out better instead of running undead. I mean, undead's always going to be a good choice, but you know the meta's shifting. You have you have to you know change with it. Yeah, and uh, the sigils you said geomancy on scepter, uh, minor corruption on dagger, and then geomancy on staff, right? That is correct. And is that just basically when people jump on you, you have a way of getting them off with condi damage and making ma doing like a hard swap almost? It's more so uh, providing more pressure. Like mm -hmm. the whole idea about this build is, I expl I explained this in the last podcast. Um, when I was running this build back in the day, you know, people weren't really favoring necros way back. Um, your pressure. That's that's what this build does. It stays up and sustains, and it's just constant pressure. And then you just snowball into just being out pressuring them. Mm -hmm. So it it's providing a way to get some bleeds out in an AOE in a team fight to provide more pressure. And it's they can't be stopped. You know, you just with everyone cleansing now, it's, it's starting to get a little bit harder for a necro to do it. But back then, it's just constant pressure, and it would snowball. And then you, of course you had epidemic back then, which was you know pre nerf. And you were able to outpressure them because they couldn't take you down. Like in order to stop a necro from pressuring a team, you gotta sit on him so he can't do it. And well, with a sustained build, it's very hard for them to shut you down. They r literally have to commit almost the entire team to stop you, which allows openings for your team. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and utilities. Let's talk a little bit about them. So uh, obviously, your heal is gonna be consumed conditions. Just too strong of a heal. <laughs> No reason to use any of the others. Yeah. Uh, Epidemic, you said. Corrupt Boon. Yes. Oh, and then the... Cool. Uh, Corrupt Boon, definitely required. I mean, even after the nerf back then. Uh, I, I still ran it back then when it was even glitchy and messing up on almost everything. Yeah, same. Still powerful. Um, it, the third utility is open it's depending on the meta again i've ran blind well with this blind well works amazingly with this build mm -hmm. but just amazing altogether wish i had a slot for it you know my other builds yeah for sure and then uh, i also ran uh well of corruption well of corruption um would allow me to get on point because when i like i said when i ran this build at the height of everything there were a lot of bunkers around there was usually three guard teams <laughs> And that was back with block bug and all that. So if I could get on point and try and blow them up just with uh, boon hate, you know, it works. So well of corruption worked really well too, even though you don't have you know wells have ground targeting. Yeah. And um, sometimes plague signet. That was, you know, it was a nice stun break. It was a stun break and a send back and more control. And since you already have so much sustain. Having cleansing your team with Plague Signet worked quite well. Yeah, I could see how that would work really well with all the regen. You would almost sometimes counter out the amount of Condies being swapped onto you. Just with healing. Yeah, I mean, it, it build still works. It really does. It's a great build. And I'm glad I can share it with people. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for doing this. Uh, what would be like a basic rotation that you do? Just for the build and stuff, like uh, like staff. Like For mine, usually I would go, you know, do a 2 a three and maybe a five staff type thing. Uh, this one would it work any differently than any type of you know mm. standard? It would build slightly differently. As okay, as you're sitting here showing you know dropping marks, you're, you'd probably be up here right here. If we were fighting Legacy, you would try and be up in where we are right now. If not up on that ledge, try yeah. and stay. The, this build, it can actually go out and fight mid with Scepter and stay mid and sustain mid without being shut down too hard. It. I, I would only uh, drop marks if, like, I mean, they were truly focusing me and I really had to get out. I'd be dropping marks, just just mark of blood everywhere. It You have so much regen with the plus healing that you're really going to be helping your team. Almost think of it as an Ellie swapping into water, but not as powerful. Okay. But the nice thing is, uh, you know, when I would play this with my team, I would purposely go out there because they, they would automatically, oh, let's jump on the Necro. Yeah. And... Usually they think I'm going to be squishy. Well, turns out I'm not, and it allows openings for my team. Yeah, I can but see yeah. that would be really effective. <clears throat> Behind it is just pressuring. So you just want to get as many conditions on everyone at all times. Dodge whenever you see openings, or even if you see people clumped up, you can throw a dodge into them and get a mark out. Yeah. 
So what would you say are the major pros of this build? It has very high sustain. It This build would fit really nice into the current uh, EU meta. It has very high sustain. It's very hard to shut down. It's can't exactly be trained as easily as the other necro builds that are out there right now. Yeah. Um, it has very high condition control just due to staff mastery being way quicker. It's you're gonna be sending back almost, you know, as the match goes on twice as fast as the other necro almost. Mm -hmm. Um in terms of damage output, how is it in terms of damage? The damage output on this build is not like you'd see on a full, you know, rabbit or carrion or terror build. It's going to be a little bit lower because you're sacrificing so much to keep your healing high and your defense is high. Yeah. But like like I explained earlier, the idea behind it is you start to outpressure them. I mean, even if it's a little bit of pressure at a time, little few bleeds here, a few bleeds there, it's still pressure and it does start to snowball. So it, it this build can't spike damage like a terror build. But it can outsustain most classes, including the current uh, Ellie meta. This build actually does quite well against that current Ellie meta because like Ellie can't shut you down. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's a really good point to make too, especially in the, how the meta's going in NA right now. All right, and let's move. What about cons? What are the negative aspects to this build? The biggest one we uh, we just stated. Its damage is not going to be far compared to a full Condi build or a Terra build. It's okay. Uh, you just don't have enough uh, condition damage. Now, I mean, once you, your team starts getting some kills and you have corruption stacked up, yeah, you're going to start hitting pretty decently hard for a, such a beefy build. But it just doesn't have the spike damage of Terror or Power Mancer or just straight Condi. Mm -hmm. And obviously, depending on which utility you take, if you don't run Spectral Walk, you're going to be kind of slow. Yeah, that's true, too. Um, also, sadly, toughness doesn't scale with Death Shroud. Yeah. Uh, does so that's another downfall I mean you're not going to have the soul reaping line to have a very you know thick death shroud bar usually you have to save your death shroud for very key moments like catching a heal or something with a fear etc etc but luckily you don't have to sit in death shroud to you know if you get hard swapped in those other builds and usually you have to get into death shroud right, right away to live until your team starts peeling yeah. this build you can actually stay out of it and be quite fine that sounds awesome. All right, that covered all the points. Thanks so much for doing this uh, for me, Zombify. Really happy because, you know, I didn't know much about this build. It's, you know, put out a lot of information. Hope a lot more people might start using it, test with it, make it their own as well. So thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you for having me. All right, so that'll sum up just about all the different type of condition tournament PvP builds for Necromancer. And obviously, there's a lot more out there. These were like the main three that are just really popular at the moment, or I find that would be really strong. I experiment all the time with them and stuff, and uh, if you guys have other builds, please leave them in the comment section or on the forums on uh, guildwars2.com, or uh, just send me a message in-game or through YouTube or whatever, you know. Uh, I would love to see them, maybe try them out for myself. If you want me to look over them and give my opinions, I'm more than happy to do that. If you guys even just have a simple question, you know, I message me in game. I'm always down to meeting new people, building the necromancer community. It's always really good. Uh, one thing definitely to do, give a big thank you to Zombify. He was great for helping me out with his build and explaining to everybody. I was really grateful for that. He did a great job. Uh, also, check out his podcast. There's going to be a link in the description for you guys. Really great podcast. A lot of fun. Good guy, A lot of good guys doing it. Very interesting, all about necromancers and stuff, so I highly recommend listening to it. Uh, thank you guys for watching my video. The uh, next one is going to be all about the different types of power builds. So I'm probably going to get a couple people uh, to describe how their builds work and stuff, because I'm not a big fan of power damage. I've not done it a few times. It's not really my flavor, so I'm going to need a little bit of help with it. Um, so, and after that, it's going to be... Uh, Mini Master and Hybrid, so that's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to that video because I love Mini Master. It's a ton of fun. So, uh, yeah, keep uh, stay tuned for those. Please subscribe, and um, let's build the community a little bit more. Okay, thank you guys for listening.